Welcome to Creative Bath Lab. Ah, the amazing world of color. Bath products have never been so popular, especially with the latest color craze in bath bomb art. We love it. We want to use it. We want to bathe in it. But is it safe? Is it legal? What are the best colorants to use? What's up everyone? My name is Dora. Today we're talking about all the colorants or color additives that can be used in cosmetics if they are FDA approved. And I'm also going to shed some light on the bottom line. Stick around until the end though, where I show you how all the colorants stack up against one another and reveal the most concentrated. Also, all cited references will be linked in the description along with every single color additive shown in this video. Let's get started. FDA regulates products sold in the U.S. to ensure their safety. They oversee lots of categories including cosmetics, which includes DIY bath products, which is what we're talking about today. Except soap, that's a bit different. There are three classification groups for colorants. The eye area, Generally includes lipsticks. Basically, if it's safe for lips, it's safe for in-bath products. This is because lips have mucous membranes, just like other openings in our body. Uh, think bathing suit bottom area. And external use for items like lotion. But as you're about to learn, just because something isn't FDA approved does not necessarily mean it's not safe. The FDA is strict on approving items only for its intended use. For instance, liquid food color isn't approved by the FDA for use in bath bombs because that's not its intended use, but it is safe to use in bath products. Liquid food color is water soluble, meaning it dissolves in water. There are two types of liquid food colorant, liquid and gel. The gel is a bit more expensive, but it's much more concentrated than liquid. I made my own color powder when I first started making bath bombs because they're easy to create custom colors with, they're easy to measure and adjust, and they don't cause reactions in the bath bomb mix. Color powders are made from a base color powder or cornstarch and liquid food colorants. For the tutorial, hit the information icon. Pigments or mineral pigments are regulated by the FDA. Pigments used to be mined, but since the 1970s are made in a lab to remove impurities and harmful levels of heavy metals. Pigments do not dissolve. They're suspended in a carrier. Always use polysorbate 80 with colorants that don't dissolve to avoid a mess in the tub. Fun fact, although these cosmetic grade pigments are lab made and much safer, they still have the same chemical molecular structure as minerals found in Earth. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are white and are both approved for in-bath products. Iron oxide produces shades of red, orange, yellow, brown, and black. Ultramarine produces shades of pink, blue, and purple and is not approved for in-bath products. Chromium oxide or hydroxide produces shades of green and teal. Always check the FDA website for each individual pigment and its approved uses. Lakes and dyes are subject to certification. Their label usually includes FDNC, food, drugs, and cosmetics, and DNC, drugs and cosmetics. Dyes are water soluble, so polysorbate 80 isn't needed to disperse the color. However, you still need it to disperse oils and fragrance oils. Dyes produce very vibrant hues and should be used in moderation. I've never dyed my skin or tub, however, I can easily see this being the culprit if overused. Dyes are identified by numbers in their name, like blue number one, red number 40, or yellow number five. Powder dyes should be bloomed or dissolved in water before using them as they look very different in their unbloomed state. Here's an example of two mixes with the same amount of dye, one bloomed, one not. See how much more color the bloom dye produces? 
The color in the unbloomed dye is locked up, but it will be released once in water. Lakes are colored using bloom dyes so they don't need to be bloomed and are also labeled with numbers. They're available in different shades and hues, all of which are weaker forms of dye that are available in different dye loads. Lakes cannot be dissolved like dyes. They're dispersed or suspended in a carrier, like oil. By definition, dyes are water soluble and pigments are oil dispersible. So even though lakes are made from dyes, they're technically pigments. To find out what's in your colorant, check the INCI International Nomenclature of Cosmetic Ingredient label. This will tell you exactly which color additives are in a specific colorant. Then check the FDA website to see each color additive's approved uses. Micas are exempt from certification. Micas do not dissolve. Natural mica is an off-white color that is mined from a natural stone mineral with shiny flakes, then ground to a powder. Therefore, colorful, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Therefore, colorful micas aren't 100% natural. They contain a mica substrate, natural or synthetic, that is coated with color additives. The color additive used determines if it's FDA approved. I use a lot of Marbler's micas, which are non-toxic cosmetic grade micas. And here's a letter stating that they're all safe to use in bath bombs, even the greens and blues. However, not all micas are approved. For example, this is a set of 100 micas. Most of them are approved and safe for lips and in bath products, except the green and blue because the green and blue micas contain color additives that are not FDA approved. Florflogopite is a synthetic mica that's not regulated by the FDA. Fun fact, lab created and natural micas perform identically. Micas vary in micron sizes. Larger micron micas are more sparkly, Smaller micron micas are smoother and more opaque. The generally category states if it's safe for lips, it's safe for in bath products. But to clarify, just because a colorant is safe for bath bombs doesn't automatically mean it's safe for lips. Here are all of Marbler's micas, all of which are safe for bath bombs. But there are only a few micas safe for lips. Mica contains fine dust particles that become airborne easily. You should avoid breathing them in. This is why I add them to wet ingredients if possible. If not, a mask is recommended. Subscribe now if you haven't already to show your support. Subscribers are a huge part of what inspires me to keep making bigger and better tutorials. Don't use aluminum-based glitter and please never ever use plastic glitter. It's not great for you and it wreaks havoc on the environment. Glitter isn't FDA approved for bath products, but if you use it, cosmetic grade and eco-friendly glitter is highly recommended. Eco glitter isn't as sparkly as other glitters. However, there are a few tricks to getting the most sparkle. Always buy holographic glitter, never just a regular color. Buy a larger chunky size like 6mm. Fine eco glitter is probably the least sparkly. Add a bigger size, especially to fine glitter. It adds variety and additional sparkle as the various size particles bounce and reflect more light. Extra chunky holographic glitter is the most sparkly. It's just really big. There's also many different eco-friendly glitter shapes to choose from. This 
glitter is safe and also FDA approved. How, you ask? Because it's not actually glitter. It's technically mica as it's made with florflogopite, just in a larger micron size. I transferred them to bottles, but this stuff is pretty amazing. It's heavier than normal mica and offers a lot more sparkle too. This is what Lush uses in their bath bombs. This is a set I purchased, I'll link it. I've been searching for something like this and finally found it researching for this tutorial. Even though it's marketed as eco-friendly glitter, just know that it's very different. Neon pigments are made with a substrate, polyester 3, which isn't regulated by the FDA. The substrate is pigmented or colored with color additives. The color additive used is what determines if it's FDA approved. So for instance, this one is pigmented with manganese violet so it is approved for bath bombs. This one is pigmented with a dye, Red 7, so this is approved too. This is a sample set of neon pigments, which will be linked. Quick tip, if you use a colorant a lot, it's always cheaper to purchase it in a larger quantity. Again, to make sure, check each individual color additive on the FDA site. Liquid soap colorants are made from different color additives. Liquid soap dyes are made with concentrated F, D, and C dyes. These are dyes, like before, just in liquid form. These specific dyes are approved to use in bath products. Liquid soap colors, or pigments, are dispersed in vegetable glycerin. These are pigments, like before, just in liquid form. Check the FDA site to see if each color additive is approved. These are generic li liquid soap colors and are labeled Skin Safe for Bath Bomb Colorants Natural Liquid Soap Colorant but I couldn't find the ingredients on the bottles, box, or website. In this case, you can request the INCI, Certificate of Analysis, or the Material Safety Data Sheet from the supplier. From there, always check each color additive. So you may be thinking, like, forget all the rules and regulations. I'm just gonna go with natural colorants. Mmm, not so fast. <laughs> The FDA states if an herb can color a bath product, it is considered a color additive and subject to regulations. Regardless of regulations, natural colorants are a great choice. They offer many skin-loving and health benefits. They may not be as bright and colorful, but they offer peace of mind to those wanting natural and organic alternatives. Check out the description for a list of natural colorants. But the ones shown here are some of the best and most concentrated for coloring bath products. Now, let's talk about the bottom line. The bottom line is almost any ingredient can be used in cosmetics without regulation. Colorants are the only regulated ingredient besides prohibited ingredients like the following. As you know, many pigments, dyes, and lakes are not approved for the generally category. However, the FDA has stated that they do not see use of these colors in bath bombs as a safety issue, and currently there is no penalty for doing so. The FDA has determined that color additives approved for external application may be used in in-bath products. Also, I've researched this question and still have no answer. Why is soap exempt from regulations? It comes in contact with our skin just like other bath products. From weeks of researching, only one answer appeared. I was expecting to find a science-based ex explanation like the saponification process weakens the colorant strength or something like that, but it turns out to be politics. I'm not saying I don't believe it, but I have a really hard time accepting it. 
If you can shed some light on this, I would greatly appreciate it. Your cosmetics do not need FDA approval before you sell them to the public. However, if a product is causing harm to others, the FDA can take action. FDA can issue warning letters, detentions, and import alerts. If you sell your products, it's incumbent on you to know the laws and regulations surrounding the ingredients used in them. My advice is to just always be honest. Consumer reviews are prevalent and word of mouth travels fast. Buyers may not like what's in your product, but they'll respect you for being upfront. Okay, so we're almost at the end. Uh, I know that I've given you guys lots and lots of information, but I don't want you to take my word for anything. Research, form your own opinion. I've linked several other sites in the description with a wealth of information for further reading. I'm here to show you guys how I make stuff and I absolutely love doing that. And a part of that entails me telling you what I used to, to make the items that I make. Your color choices are your own. I cannot reiterate this enough. If you're not comfortable using a certain ingredient or color colorant that I use, don't use it. I respect your opinion and I would greatly appreciate it if you respected mine. Okay. The first six people who live in the United States that type this comment below Show me the mica. You'll have a chance to win it. You'll be eligible to win 100 micas plus some of my favorites. And now for the results. I made a bath bomb with each type of colorant shown today. First, let me say that I was shocked by how poorly my color powder stacked up. Mica powder colored much better than I thought possible. It's a highly pigmented mica, but still. I was blown away by how well the generic liquid soap colorants performed and by how pigmented they were. These are the two ultramarine pigments, liquid and powder. Here's the liquid gel food colorant. Here's the lake, and here's the dye. The ingredients in the experiment and even the water were all precisely measured. Just know the ultramarines, especially the liquid, smell like rotten eggs. It ruined the bath bomb and almost ran me out. Some colorants like the ultramarine powder and liquid, plus the liquid neon pigment and indigo powder performed horrible. They clumped on the cup and didn't color the water. The neon pigment powder and the mica both clumped in this experiment. However, I've used both of them hundreds of times before and I've never had this issue. For coloring the water, mica comes in at number eight, neon pigment at number seven, color powder at number six, liquid soap dye at number five, liquid gel food colorant at number four, generic liquid soap colorant at number three, Lake at number two, and of course, dye is number one. Just be careful with that one. Thank you for joining me today. 